Hello everyone and welcome back to Subnautica Below Zero. I'm Brad the Green Knight as always and I finally got my snow fox to operate exactly how I wanted it to. It's devilishly hot outside where I live right now. Kind of the heat of summer right now. So I figured it'd be great it'd be good for me to hop back into the semi-frozen world of Subnautica Below Zero. Today's episode's going to be a little different than normal since um, I still have yet to see any new uh, story related or uh, content or new biomes as such. Um, one thing that has happened since the last episode though was I finally graduated college with my bachelor's in evolutionary, ecological, and uh, um, Oh, what was the thing? It's triple E biology, basically, if anyone, if you understand what that is. It's um, basically just environmental science. So I figured today's episode, we would spend some time exercising my naturalist skills that I hope to utilize in my career in the future. You know, besides from my career in YouTube, of course, because I love you guys too much to leave you. Um, so today, we are going to spend our time... Uh, searching out um, the different new creatures that have been introduced in uh, this game in the recent updates that we haven't gotten to get up close and personal with before. And I can see already our first target of the day over there. So let's see if we can get a closer look a little safely. I forgot this thing had an after booster. That can be frightening. Gonna do a little bit of exploration, see what we see on the way, but my goal is to get up close and personal with and observe at least 10 new species that I haven't come across before. Um, in today's episode, uh, might be less depending on what time I have today. I've got a lot of work on my plate to do. Whoa. Weird standing glacier. Or ice sickle. Oh, it's... There it falls. All right, let's see if we can't... Whoa, it's still a little wobbly, the snow fox. We're going to see if I can get closer to one of these uh, snow stalkers here. Here we go. All right, now, these guys are highly aggressive. They're basically the, I guess, Subnautica Below Zero's um, equivalent of our polar bears. You might be surprised to hear this. They are r relatives of the stalkers that you usually find in the uh, in the creep vine. Creep vine? Not creep vine. I think that's in Skyrim. The whoa in the glowing kelp fields. I can't remember what they're called. But yeah, there are relatives of those shark-like stalkers that constantly seem to pick up metal and lose their teeth all the time. Except these guys somehow developed the ability to walk on land and as I said before, they are quite aggressive. They have, the, oh gosh, holy crap. Oh, run, 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 run. Get away, easy now. Batgirl, okay. She got her attack in and then she, uh, let's see, she seemed to have lost interest in me once she got me off my bike. Ooh, that was close. All right, girl. Now, I want to see if I can get a scan on these guys. Now, this is highly dangerous. I don't really have any weapons capable of fending these guys off. Um, as far as I understand, the best tactic to engage when getting close to these guys is as soon as they start charging, just run. All right, now we're gonna try and run, see if we can get a tag on it, pick up some more info for our PDA. Oh shit, she's coming, run! Holy crap! Now luckily they seem to be rather slow, so it might be possible to actually outpace these guys. Okay, I think we've... Alright, we seem to have lost her. I hear another one nearby, though. Ooh, very dangerous now. It's getting dark out. There she is. Alright, she she is hovering right next to my bike. I want to see if... We can get closer. Maybe sneak up behind her. Maybe she won't notice. We seem to be able to outpace her, which is good. Alright, let's see if we can get a scan. Get, whoa, she got me. Oh, get off. Get off. Can't get my knife out. Fuck. Run. Get to safety quick. Elevation is a good idea. Oh, no. 
Is she chasing? No, she seems to have given up on us. All right. All right, new tactic. Uh, I don't think we're going to be able to get a scan on these guys unless the scanner actually saves some detail. All right, scan, 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 scan. Run! Fuck, she got us again. Damn it. Ow. Oh, this is, this is nasty. Nasty girl. Back off. She's chasing us again. Okay, so she seems to lose interest in us pretty quickly once we get to about 20 or so feet away from her. I guess uh, living out here in the cold saps a lot of energy from you, so they, pr they probably need to eat a lot. And they're probably a lot like lions. They only have so much energy to expend in a single... Uh-oh, don't want to open that up. That works. All right, they probably expend a lot of energy cha uh, putting down a chase, so if they can't kill you in one move... They're probably going to give up pretty quickly, so that's as, that's as far as I'm getting. All right, we're going to activate the snow fox again and give it a little repair. We need a, we might need to have a quick escape here. All right, that's good. All right, now I'm going to consume a health kit. Nope, consume it. There we go. That's that's something. All right, now let's see if we can't get close enough to her again. Get some scanage on. I don't want to have to kill this girl. Scan, 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 scan. Damn it, she grabbed us again. I think we can survive it though. Get off, girl. Back off. Just run. And she lost interest. Good. This tactic is working. We almost have a complete scan of this snow stalker. After we scan her, we're gonna make our way back to our sea truck. Alright, we got the scan. Let's move. No, she got us! Oh, get off! Off me, girl! Off! I am not- I am not tasty. I'm wrapped up in bad- bad stuff. Bad plastic. If my suit's made of plastic, I don't know. Whew, she almost knocked us out, but we were able to make it. Let's see if we can't get on the snow fox and make our way back to our uh, temporary base. Alright, here we go. All right, first successful new scan of the... Whoop, I hear a roar. Let's not spend any time here. Let's, uh... Yeah, let's not dawdle. We need to get home. Ooh. Okay, so new thing discovered. When you go over a geyser with these things, you get to fly a little bit. That's perfect. That should help with some jumps. Oh, we come face to face with another Shadow Stalker. We gotta move. Okay, we seem to easily be able to outpace these guys. That's good. That was a good hop. Can I make this jump? Nope, I fell right in. Very dangerous to do that. You never know if you might land on top of one of these guys. They seem to pop up at wherever they please. Now yeah, as far as I understand, they seem to be the apex predator of the glacial biome, at least on the surface. Now before we leave, I was hoping to catch a glimpse of one of their babies, but I don't know if they've been in implemented in the game yet, because I have yet to see a baby, a baby snow stalker. Um, for now, let's pack up and get back to our, uh, get back to our sea truck. All right, let's pack you up. And then we'll move on to some of the more underwater biomes where some more creatures await us. We enter here. Perfect. Let's cook ourselves up some grub before moving on. So now we need to find our way out of here again, which is, I believe, down here. All right, so I've discovered the tar our next target, which relies down in the deep, twisty bridges that uh, very dark shadowy pay, uh, place beneath of the twisty bridge is where we were trying to collect the other sea truck fragments in an earlier episode where I almost crapped myself out of fear. So this should be fun. Oh yeah, check this out. New creature alert. So this isn't necessarily on our list as we did come across them before, but now we have a good time to, uh, a good bit of time to study them while on our way to our next target creature. This is the Pinacarid. Um seemingly based on our real-world uh, uh, now fossilized creatures, the Anomalocaris, I believe it's called. I've, I know I've got that name mistaken before. These guys are definite predators of 
small um, creatures dwelling in the shallows, but they don't seem to pay us any mind, really, unless we start getting a little too close. Yeah, they do seem to be rather, rather friendly towards us. Though they do prey on smaller... on the smaller uh, dwellers of the more surface biomes, such as in the nearby kelp forest, as you see here. Wait, where'd they go? I lost them. And instead I got some sea monkeys occupying my view. Ah, here we go. I'm not sure that they school. I think they just... Based on what I can tell, they just don't seem to swim very far from their uh, nesting grounds, which seem to be in the kelp forest, although I have yet to see a pinacarid egg yet. I don't... In fact, I haven't really come across many eggs for any of the newer creatures yet. They seem to not have been implemented in the game yet. As you can see, they do seem to live rather peacefully with the... Um, with the sea monkeys. And they also don't seem that voracious of predators. They only eat exactly what they need, therefore keeping this potentially delicate environment in balance, as all things should be. I'm not related to Thanos, I promise you that. I guess also while we're here, we should take a look at the sea monkeys, the devilish little creatures who like to steal items right out of my hand. They seem to be herbivores, as far as I can tell. I haven't seen them eat any other creatures yet, so they probably feed on plankton or maybe even uh, nibble on the leaves of the kelp forests themselves. But beyond the stealing of items out of, a, out of a person's hands, they do seem to be rather harmless creatures, although their thieving behavior could become a problem if you happen to be pursued by a creature such as a stalker or a bone shark, and they happen, and these guys come along and happen to steal the gun right out of your hand, leaving you defenseless. So, on a scale of one to five, I'd say these guys would be about a f three with, oh no, they're, they're a zero without other predators around. They're about a three if you're being pursued right now, so best to stay away from these guys if you think there's other predators nearby. Anyway, moving on. Alright, we found another pit stop creature, one we've met before and been almost eaten by. The Brute Shark is a new creature um, found in the Twisty Bridges and Lee Pads Islands. As we've discovered, these are highly aggressive predators. Oh, here he comes. Get out. Don't bite me. You'll hurt your teeth. I'll yeah, that's what you get. I'm going to leave this guy alone. Because um, this apex predator of the Twisty Bridges and Lilypad Islands biomes is very angry. We shouldn't be here any longer than we have to. Don't want to stress the creatures out. Alright, we seem to f have finally made our way down into the deep Twisty Bridges. And luckily with our new sea truck upgrades, we just might be able to go down there in the sea truck and not have to go out and free dive this area, which is otherwise extremely, it's an ex extremely dangerous task. Now the creature I'm looking for in here is another apex predator. One about as long as the sea truck itself with the two modules attached that I've got. And it is a highly dangerous, voracious predator. Now I have no idea if I'll even be able to scan this thing at all, but a good scientist laughs in the face of danger. That's not strictly true. A good scientist knows how to approach a dangerous situation in a way that makes it not so dangerous. All right, we have found our, ta our target creature, the squid shark. Look at this beautiful creature. Seems to be based on, in design, the uh, great white sharks of our world with that Beautiful dual tone coloring. Oh. I think they've seen us. Whoa, she's seen us. Back away. Whoa, look at those gnarly teeth. All right, she seems to have given up the chase at least temporarily. Luckily, the creatures we've met so far don't seem to be that interested in pursuing us all over their biomes. Now, without a proper DNA sampling, I can't tell exactly this creature's evolutionary history, but they seem to at least biologically be a, rel a distant relative of the brute sharks that we saw earlier. 
masters of their own domain. Ah, she's got us. Back away, girl. I don't want to have to hurt you. I don't even think I can. I don't have any stunning equipment. Anyway, this creature seems to have developed quite an efficient hunting tactic. It swims around rather lazily, hiding its true danger behind those... That, uh... That vampire squid-like tentacle bell system on the front of its face that hides its mouth that's able to jut out very much like a, uh, a goblin shark. So whenever they get close to a prey item, they open their mouths and they shoot out at rapid speed, creating a sort of suction-like vortex of water right in front of their mouths, dragging prey items in whenever they get too close. As you can see right there, that was a perfect example. Now, I need to park the sea truck rather away, but not so far that we can't get to it in times of danger. Because this is our best defense right now, is being able to get back into the sea truck. So we're going to try and get out there and get a scan of it for extra data for review later. Alright, now comes the hard part. Getting out of the sea truck and seeing if we can get close enough to at least get some scans of this thing. Ooh, this is a very dangerous endeavor. Alright, we're scanning. Scanning. I need to be able to run at a moment's notice. She doesn't seem too perturbed by the fact that we're near. Oh, she, there, she's got pissed. We gotta run. Where is the sea truck? There's the sea truck. We gotta run. We gotta use the tunnels to distract her. Alright, we found the sea truck. Let's get inside. Alright, we made it in safely. I think I got at least a partial scan of the of the creature. And there she is. Alright, we're gonna try to go back out there and see if we can get another scan. We're making good progress here. Alright, we're about halfway through a scan. Come on, girl. Be patient with me. Got it, we got the scan. Let's get back to the sea truck before she gets angry. Oh, she's angry! She's angry! Get inside, get inside, get inside! Woo! That was potentially dangerous. Alright girl, we're gonna leave you alone. Relax. No need to flail about angrily. Alright, let's get back up to the surface and fight our next target. Another successful scan. I don't think we'll get to ten creatures today. We might get up to five new scannable creatures perhaps. Lucky us, we've come across another uh, pit stop creature, one we've met before and probably scanned who isn't necessarily on our list, but still definitely worth talking about. One of my favorite creatures, the Arctic Ray. It is a very, it is a relatively passive creature to us, only seems interested on pre in preying on small local uh, fish, small prey items, uh, but otherwise generally seems passive and otherwise very uninterested in us. Which is a good thing. I couldn't imagine what a creature that fast could probably do to us. But anyway, we'll leave it alone for now and move on to our next target creature. Alright, our next target creature is another very dangerous uh, predator, a member of the Leviathan class of species known as the... I'm probably going to butcher the hell out of this, but the Chelicerate? Chelicerate? It's a sort of giant prawn-like creature. Inhabit inhabiting currently the Purple Vents biome, which is a new biome released in the last update. So I'm going to try and search around and find it and see if we can find the Chelicerate. Chelicerate. Please uh, correct me if I'm mispronouncing that. Alright, I believe we've come across the Purple Vents, a new type of thermal vent biome, which let's see if we can get out and scan one of these vents and see what that material is that's coming out the top of them. I've never known a thermal vent to spew purple like that so much. What is this? Whoa! Whoa! Okay, bad idea to get close to those vents when they're popping. That's uh, that's very harmful to us. Let's get back in the sea truck and see if we can't find our next target creature. The Chelicerate. Chelicerate? Whoa! Here's another pit stop creature, one one of our old friends from the first uh, Subnautica game. Hello there, Sea Emperor Leviathan. I wonder if I'm finally able to get out and scan you. Let's hop out and see. Can I not scan you? I don't seem to be able to scan you.
Whoa, you're kind of doing some weird flip, buddy. You okay? Okay, so I can't, so I can't scan them yet. That is perfectly okay. It's good to know that they have a thriving community out here near the uh, near the lily pad islands, and they seem to also be creating a steady stream of that enzyme 42, which is responsible for curing the Kara bacterium, a sickness that almost wiped out life on this planet until in the last game, where we were able to free these guys, allowing them to proliferate the presence of enzyme 42, thereby saving the, pla the, species, plant, uh, the species of this planet. Excuse me. Still, no sign of our target species yet, but we're going to keep looking. As one of the co-op knights, I do not give up on my endeavors. Unless, of course, I run out of recording time. <laughs> run out of film, you know. All right, we found our target creature known as the Calicerit, a giant prawn-like species, which seems to also be he uh, heavily related to, or at least... Uh, biologically similar to killer whales on Earth, as far as I can tell. Whoa, that is a nasty looking gaze they've got there. Whoa! Bone shark attacking. Back off, buddy. Alright, before we get any closer, I'm gonna need to get out and repair this thing. We are starting to run low on health here. Anyway, back to our target creature. The Calicerate is a highly aggressive Leviathan-class species found generally in the crystal caves or purple vents biomes, the crystal caves of which have yet to be fully introduced into the game. So right now they can only be found technically in the purple vents biomes. Let's keep our distance here. Those teeth look nasty. Let's see. As far as studies have shown, there only seem to be three currently living individuals to have been observed on the planet that makes them even rarer than currently than the Sea Emperor Leviathans, as, at least as far as we know. There could be other parts on the planet where these creatures exist. Whoa! It's got it! It's got the sea shark! We gotta get out of its mouth! Get off! Let's get out of here! I did not see that coming. Apparently they are very hungry. Get off, Bone Shark. You can't do anything to us. I hear you, computer lady. Anyway. So it looks like the Calicerate is a very aggressive creature. It just barely looked at the sea truck and went for it. If we weren't able to shake our way out of its grip, it probably could have cracked the canopy here and we would have been goners. The species name Calicerate seems to have been given to it um, by us, derived from the taxonomic classification Calicerata. Um, uh oh, he's coming for us. We got to get out of here. Oh gosh, he's got us again. Let go of the sea truck! Oh, we are not in good shape here. We need to back away and do some heal before we try and get back to this creature. Ooh, that was dangerous. That was very scary. All right, let's uh, get up here. That is a very dangerous creature. We need to keep our distance. I don't know if we'll be able to get a scan for this. All right, so let's do a repair on the sea truck here. Anyway, as I was saying, the Calicerate name seems to be derived from Calicerata, a subphylum known to contain species such as horseshoe crabs. That is a very dangerous mouth. We need to stay away from this monster. It could tear us a new one if it wanted to. Alright, now this is going to be highly dangerous. I'm going to... Ow. I'm going to... All right, now with the health that we're on at right now, it is far too dangerous for us to try and sneak up and get this, get a scan of this creature. It is very aware of its surroundings at all times. It's starting to get dark, which makes it very dangerous to hang out around this creature. But a few more tidbits on this thing. It seems to be a much more armored relative of the squid shark based on, uh, based on biological structure, and apparently they can jump out of the water. I have never seen that before. Very, very interesting. But its hunting tactic also seems to be very similar to that of the squid shark in that it has mouth parts hidden behind a very strange shaped beak. Uh, I lost track of it. Crap. Anyway, it seems to have a multi-part beak 
that opens up at high velocity, creating a sort of vacuum in front of its mouth, which allows it to suck in prey items. But whoa, there it is. All right, this is getting very dangerous. I, we're going to be unable to get a scan of this creature today because I, I just have no health. I have no stasis rifle. I have no way of getting close to that creature um, to scan it before it comes up and chomps me down like like a like a mid-morning snack. So uh, we're going to have to put that aside for now and make our way back home. But anyway, we're going to head home with that info for now. Thank you so much for joining me on today's episode of Subnautica Below Zero, a first in our uh, little... Oops. <laughs> the, the first in a small series of, uh, of xenozoology, studying planet 4546B's new creatures and their effects on the local ecosystems. Thank you again for joining me, and I hope to see you again soon. Don't stop learning, and take care.